So problem three is recognizing opposite factors. Now, if you look at the example that they give us here, the x minus 3 and it's over 3 minus x, you can see that they look pretty similar, but they're not exactly. So what we've got to do is we need to flip, things, flip some things around. So here to simplify this expression, we're going to take, uh, let me rewrite it. It says x minus 3 over 3 minus x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative x and this 3 and we're going to flip them around. Now remember when we do, when we move things around, you have to remember that the sign goes with the number that follows. So when we rewrite this, we're going to end up with x minus 3 over here. If I put the x on front, it's going to be a negative x plus 3. Okay. Okay. There's looking closer. They're all, they look, look the same, but they're not, not yet. The next step that we have to do here is we need to factor out a negative 1. Okay. So in the denominator, if I factor out that negative 1, what, what will be left is a positive x minus 3, which is what we have in the numerator. Okay? So then, once we have that in the numerator, then you can start canceling things out. Okay? So the way that you recognize opposite factors is that they look pretty much the same. You're going to have to factor out a negative 1 to make them exactly the same. Okay? So let's take a look at problem A. Problem A says this, the, the instructions, what is a simplified form of the expression? And we also want to state our excluded values. So let's go ahead and start with our excluded values. And again, that is the number um, that x will be that will make this denominator equal to 0. So we have, for our excluded values, we have 5 minus 2x, and that cannot be equal to 0, okay? So if we subtract 5 on both sides, we end up with negative 2x is not equal to negative 5. Then we divide by negative 2 on both sides, so x cannot be equal to positive 5 halves. Okay, so there's our excluded value. Okay, so now we want to do some flipping around here. So if I, if I move this around, and again, we're going to put that 2x in front of that 5. And of course that 5, um, the way it's written here, is a positive. So when we rewrite, we have 2x minus 5 over negative 2x plus 5. And now, of course, it, we want to factor out the negative um, in this denominator. Okay, we want to factor out the negative 1 in that denominator. So when we factor out the negative 1 in the denominator, we're going to end up with a positive 2x minus 5 in the denominator. And of course, in the numerator, we have a 2x minus 5. So now, when we cancel out, this cancels to 1, and this cancels to 1. And then when we multiply straight across, we get um, 1 over negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. And there's our final answer. All right, so let's take a look at problem B. Now here, you, we see that we have a difference of squares in the numerator, and then we have the variable second in the denominator. So let's go ahead and factor 
the numerator because we know it's a difference of squares. So we know that special case is y plus 4 times y minus 4. Okay, and I'm assuming that you know that now. Okay, um, and then the, the, the denominator we have 4 minus y. Now if I wanted to find my excluded values, I want to go ahead and set my denominator equal to 0. So 4 minus y is equal to 0. We want to be not equal to 0. So if I subtract 4 on both sides, we get negative y is not equal to negative 4. Divide by negative 1. So y cannot be equal to a positive 4. And that makes sense because 4 minus 4 is 0. So now we're going to go ahead and factor out a negative 1 from this denominator. Okay? So when we do that, we end up factoring out our negative 1. And actually, before we factor out the negative 1, I like to, I like to move it around first. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to go ahead and move that negative y to the front <coughs> and that positive 4 to the back, okay? I, like, I just like flipping them around first for some reason. Uh, you don't have to do it first, but I like to. Okay, so we're going to have uh, y plus 4 times y minus 4, and then we'll flip this around so this is a negative y plus 4. Okay, so now I can go ahead and factor out um, that negative 1. So in the denominator, we factor out the negative 1, and we'll end up with y minus 4. And then if we rewrite this uh, uh, numerator, I guess I have to just go ahead and write it. We're going to have y plus 4 times y minus 4, and you can see that the negative 4, I mean y minus 4 cancels to 1, and y minus 4 cancels to 1, and then we can multiply straight across. So we end up with y plus 4 all over negative 1. And then we can just um, distribute that negative 1 throughout the parentheses again. So this is going to be equal to negative y minus 4. Or you can just leave it like this. I think, I think that, that, that this would be the best um, answer. So negative y minus 4 for y not equal to 4. All right, so for problem C, um, we can see that we have a, a trinomial in the denominator in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And then we also have um, a factorable numerator. Okay, so if I want to factor that numerator, let's go ahead and factor um, a 3 out. So 3, factoring out, we end up with 1 minus 3d, and this is what we're going to have to turn around, okay? And then in the denominator, we have ac, so that's going to be 6 times 1, which is 6. We want to end up with a positive b and a negative 1 for my c, okay? So when I do this, oops, let's see. We have 6d squared um, let's do minus 2d plus 3d minus 1. Okay? So when we do that, we can fact we can group. So let's group the 6 and the 2, and let's group 
3D and the negative 1. So in the first one, we can factor out a 2D, which gives us 3D minus 1. Yep. And then in the second one, we're factoring out, we're not really factoring anything out, we're just, uh, let's, so we can say plus 1, since that doesn't change anything, and we end up with 3D minus 1 again. So our binomial for our denominator will be 3D minus 1 times 2D plus 1. Okay? So this is going to go right here. So we have 3D minus 1 and 2D plus 1. Okay? <coughs> so now we need to flip this around. Okay? So when we do that, we end up with um, 3 times negative 3D plus 1 all over all that stuff again. Let's see, can I get that? Yep. All over this. Oops. Excuse me. So now, let's see, now we can factor out a negative 1. So when I factor out a negative 1, when I factor out a negative 1, we're going to multiply that negative 1 times 3. So we're going to have the 3, then we're going to factor out a negative 1, and then what's left in there is 3D minus 1 all over all that stuff again. Oops. So now we can see 3D minus 1, 3D minus 1, and we can cancel those out. So this cancels to 1, this cancels to 1, and we multiply straight across, so that's negative, or 3 times negative 1 times 1 <coughs> is negative 3. All over 1 times 2D, 2D plus 1, which is 2D plus 1. And there's your final answer. What are we forgetting? Excluded values. Very good. So now when we do this, we can just take these and set them equal to 0. So we have 3D minus 1 is not equal to 0. And we have 2D plus 1 is not equal to 0. So when we simplify, we have 3D is not equal to 1, divide by 3, and D is equal to 1 third. So it can't be 1 <coughs> one third. So 2D plus 1, we're going to subtract 1 on both sides, so we have 2D minus 1, oops, sorry, that's not right. So we have 2D is not equal to negative 1, then we'll divide by 2, and D is not equal to negative 1 half. So our final answer will be negative 3 over 2D plus 1, or D is not equal to 1 third, and D is not equal to negative one half. All right, so let's look at problem B. And I apologize for coughing in your ears, but I'm getting really sick, guys. All right, so here for uh, problem D, we are. Uh, let's see. First thing we can do up here is we can factor out some threes. We can factor out a three up there. So 3 times a quantity of 1 minus z. And then down below here, you can see you can factor out a 2. So 2 times uh, z squared minus 1. Oh, look. This is a difference of squares, right? Oops. That is a difference of squares. So when we uh, factor that, 
Those are my favorite too. We end up with 2 times z plus 1 over z minus 1. And now you can see that we can flip this around. And then once we flip that around, then you'll see something else. So we have 3 times negative z plus 1. What do I do now? I want to factor out a negative 1. So we're going to have 3 times the negative 1 that we're factoring out times uh, what's left in the parentheses, so that's going to be z minus 1 all over 2 times z plus 1 times z minus 1. So the z minus 1 and the z minus 1 will cancel. And what we're left with is negative 3 in the numerator and then 2 times z plus 1 in the denominator. And of course, again, we have to go back and figure out what our um, excluded values are. <coughs> well, actually, we could, we, instead of going from this original, maybe we can just go from here. Well, let's just go from the original. So we have 2z squared minus 2 that cannot be equal to 0. So here we're going to add 2 on both sides. And we end up with 2z squared is equal to, or not equal to, 2. Divide by 2. And z squared cannot be equal to 1. Now, of course, the inverse of the square is a square root. So we're going to square root both sides there. And so we end up with z cannot be equal to positive 1 or a negative 1. Remember how we used to write that? Positive, negative 1 like that? Now if you look, there it is. If we, if we, solve, if we solve both of those, if we set those equal to 0, there's our negative 1, there's our positive 1. Okay? So when we write our final answer, we have negative 3 over 2 times quantity of z plus 1, or z is not equal to positive or negative 1.